immune system is a fascinating but complex system. It has to act on every level. Wherever there is an invasion by pathogens, the microorganisms that cause disease. Pathogens such as disease-causing bacteria enter the body through the skin and the mucosa, the cell surfaces around the respiratory, gastrointestinal and genitourinary systems. Once they get in, alarm bells are activated. Actually, chemical messages are being secreted and these are detected by special cells that detect danger. These special cells are part of the first line of defense. They are the neutrophils, the basophils, the eosinophils, the natural killer or NK cells, the dendritic cells and the monocytes that transform into macrophages when they get into tissue. The first line of defense also includes special proteins, the complement proteins. Several different protein messengers, also known as cytokines, and several other antimicrobial proteins. Some of these have been characterized and others have not yet been identified. So these cells and proteins interact with each other to try and kill the pathogens. Unfortunately, some very virulent pathogens are able to survive this onslaught. When it is clear that the infection is not being controlled, the dendritic cells are activated. Pathogens are composed of several different proteins which are not found in the host. These foreign proteins are known as antigens. The dendritic cells internalize the pathogens by phagocytosis. Then they break them up in a complex process and display the antigens of the pathogen on the dendritic cell surfaces. After this, the dendritic cells bearing antigens, along with the particles of dead pathogens, are carried along to lymph nodes or the spleen. There, they stimulate more specialized cells which are part of the second line of defense. These specialized cells are known as the lymphocytes. There are two main types of lymphocytes, the B cells and the T cells. The B cells can produce antibodies. These are proteins that are specifically directed towards the antigens on pathogens. B cells that are activated by the antigens start churning out antibodies. These antibodies get into the bloodstream and go to where the pathogens are. At sites of infection, the antibodies bind to the pathogens. These antibody pathogen complexes are taken up by cells of the first line of defense by phagocytosis. There are two kinds of T cells, the helper cells and the cytotoxic cell. Helper T cells interact with the B cells to get them to produce more antibodies and they also assist the other cells to fight the infection. That's why they are called helper cells. Some pathogens are able to live inside cells and so they are hiding from the antibodies and other immune factors. The second type of T cell, the cytotoxic cell, kills these infected cells. Once the infection is cleared, this process also includes making the memory cells. These are the memory B and the memory T cells. These memory cells are very important because if there is another infection later on by the same pathogen, it is recognized and dealt with much faster. This prevents you from getting reinfected by the same pathogen. All of this knowledge is quite important because we have used it to help develop vaccines against infectious agents. This is the most important aspect of the immune system that human beings have been exploiting to help save lives. Vaccines are the most cost-effective method of preventing infections and they have saved millions of lives worldwide.